Last week, if you watched my coverage of the debate between John Fetterman and Dr. Oz, you know that I was devastated because I didn't think it went particularly well for John Fetterman. And I just didn't expect viewers and voters to take into consideration the fact that he was recovering from a stroke. I just don't expect people to be that thoughtful. And I think that they're relatively cruel. So I kind of expected the worst and I braced for the worst. However, polls are confirming that that debate performance did not hurt John Fetterman. In fact, not much has really changed overall. Sure, his overall polling average has decreased, but a New York Times Siena College poll found that he's still doing quite well. The Hill reports Democratic Pennsylvania Senate nominee John Fetterman is leading Republican Mehmet Oz by five points, according to a New York Times Siena College poll published just more than a week before Election Day. About 49 percent of likely voters surveyed support Fetterman, while 44 percent back Oz. The results are similar to other polling showing leads the Democratic candidate has held over Oz for much of the campaign, including a six point advantage in a survey last week. But the latest survey comes after Fetterman struggled on the stage during a debate against Oz last week. So I think that this proves that debates aren't as relevant as they used to be. Before, debates could make or break candidates. But nowadays, perhaps not so much. Um, now, in case you were curious, these are the other races that the same poll looked at. So in Arizona, Kelly is leading Masters 51 to 45. In Georgia, Warnock is leading Walker 49 to 46. And in Nevada, Masto and Lexald are tied. So overall, you know, these are all really, really close races, with the exception of the one from Arizona. It looks like that one, Masters, is doing pretty poorly. Uh, but these are all going to be close races. And yes, these are leads that we're seeing for Democrats. But keep in mind, these can still go either way, right? Now, I do want to pour a little bit of cold water over our optimism because there were two other polls, post-debate polls from the Fetterman-Oz uh, debate. And they actually showed that Oz was gaining on Fetterman. But apparently the methodology of these polls wasn't as broad as the uh, Siena College New York, New York Times poll. So the article will address this, the one from Newsweek, which we're going to read. But they essentially did not have a good representative sample of the voting demographics. And primarily younger voters were left out. And that's who Fetterman's key voting base of support is. So in an article from a couple of days ago before the New York Times poll was released, Newsweek explains polls conducted by coefficient and insider advantage carried out between October 26th and 28th show Oz could be opening up a lead over his Democrat rival with a celebrity doctor gathering an estimated 48 percent of the vote against Fetterman's 45 percent. A poll by WIC dated between October 26th and 27th gives Oz three additional percentage points, estimating he is now backed by 48% of voters compared to Fetterman's 46%. However, the insider advantage poll drew some criticism online with an expert saying the sample lacked a sufficient amount of voters under 40, a key base for Fetterman. Now, the expert who they're referencing is Tom Bonnier. He's the CEO of Target Smart. And this is what he says via Twitter. This is the first poll of the cycle that actually made me laugh out loud. The likely voter sample has voters under the age of 40 at 14%. There were 25% of the electorate in 2018 and 28% in 2020. This poll should be entirely ignored. And I think that his critique here is valid. There's no reason why anyone should expect the under 40 voting demographic to decrease in 2022 if the last two years they increased. So that actually makes no sense. And that sample is not representative. And how unrepresentative it is, you know, Oz doesn't have that big of a lead. Now, having said that, though, uh, he also says that there's a possibility that the GOP is trying to create these outlier polls as a way to create media narratives. So that way, 
voters will be possibly, I don't know, disillusioned or uh, sad thinking that Fetterman's going to lose. So they think, what's the point and stay home? I don't necessarily think that it's that deep. I mean, these pollsters, they are real pollsters. In fact, 538 gives Insider a B and WIC has a provisional rating of A slash B. But when you look at pollsters like Siena College and New York Times, they have an A plus rating. So certainly I'm going to take what they say into consideration more so than these other uh, polls. Uh, But still, those polls did cause Fetterman's average to decrease, but by and large, the most accurate poll is showing that the debate didn't really change things. Now, even if it did change things, odds are it didn't change things as much as I had anticipated. But this race is still... It's a toss up in my opinion. And even if it is the case that you believe that Fetterman is poised to win, view it in your mind as a toss up and get out there and vote. Because if you get too complacent, if you think that the situation is hopeless, then it could become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So what matters is the votes. Polls give us a little bit of a gauge as to where the electorate is at, but we know for sure beyond a shadow of a doubt, where the electorate is when they vote. And that is the most important thing. We're so close to the election that I don't think you should base your decision on whether or not to vote on what the polls say. Ignore the polls. Look at them if you're just curious. But ultimately, don't use the polls to determine whether or not you vote. I I feel like this goes without saying, and most of my viewers probably know this. But either way, it seems like not all hope is lost after that debate. And Fetterman is still in this race and he's in a great spot to win. So maybe voters, after all, aren't that cruel. And they do take into consideration whether or not somebody suffered from a stroke. So that makes me feel a little bit of, I don't want to say like hopium, but it maybe changes my perspective of voters because I have kind of viewed a lot of Americans as, I mean, I hate to say it, easily duped by right-wing propaganda. So if they make it seem as if, you know, Fetterman is just completely far gone and this is a cognitive issue and he's not fit to serve, perhaps they would buy that, but apparently not, which I think is cause for celebration. So either way, Fetterman's not out. If you live in Pennsylvania, vote for Fetterman.